I know I'm going to get a lot of death threats in the comments section, so if you don't like this, then that's your problem. Don't go blaming me. Anyway, l let's just get started. Roll the intro. Is it a logo? No, not this hill. That hill. I mean the other hill. Okay, let's try this again. Is it a logo? Is it a logo? Apparently it is. But it's not a very good one. Well, hey guys, it's me again, and you know I may have referenced the fact that I'm not too keen on the 2023 rebrand of PBS Kids on this video I made when it was announced. Yeah, and I've wanted to make a review and rant on it, but I needed a lot more time and research to give more complete thoughts without acting like a whiny, nitpicky child. I don't want change! I don't want change! Everything has to stay the same! Yeah, well, here we are in 2024, and I've finally gotten around to making my full thoughts on modern PBS Kids and why it's doomed to fail these days. Okay, first and foremost, one of the main bad qualities is the logo change and the rebrand, which received backlash from uh, many fans of PBS Kids, including myself, while the rest of them have hopeful, positive mindsets and think that it looks okay at worst, but pretty good at best. The reason why the dash and dot faces in the circle were amazing was because they were meant to appeal to kids, which is why they don't call it PBS Kids for nothing. While the dot face became no longer in use since October 7, 2013, along with the introduction of Dot D and Dell, the dash face continued to be seen in the logo for a while. Until now. This is a massive downgrade, as it's just a circle with the words PBS Kids and no mascot being shown. Compared to the previous brandings, this rebrand feels very lazy, uninteresting, and just plain simple at best. Aside from the logo change, a lot of their best shows like Thomas and Friends, Bob the Builder, The Electric Company, and Clifford the Big Red Dog have been screwed over by their bad reboots with the former two no longer airing on public TV since Mattel refused to pay the funding. And many other best shows have been unnecessarily cancelled and replaced with these boring, cringeworthy, and lifeless cartoons that feel absolutely nothing, and I mean nothing, like the actual, like actual PBS kids shows. Even if there are still some enjoyable shows for kids, most of their new shows nowadays focus only on protecting the environment, learning about cultures, or learning how to be a good person, making them seem to me like they're just the same show. 
And even Cyber Chase, which originally focused on math, now focuses on protecting the environment and eating healthy as of season 10, making it boring and lacking the action pack that the first eight seasons and to a lesser extent season nine had and with the instant lack of variety and removal of some of the classic shows after 2022 it caused many older viewers to feel that pbs had lost its touch not to mention they haven't even re-aired any of my childhood favorites like theodore tugboat since 2002 and and that's sad for me because it feels like they don't give a shit about it anymore since it ended that year despite it still being memorable to those who grew up watching it including me and some of their modern shows haven't even have gotten either bad finales or have ended on cliffhangers which are not very good ways to end a show oh yes and the family night block isn't as memorable as it was back in 2017 since they don't bother to promote any new episodes and movies or specials of their less popular shows often resulting in their unfair cancellations or removals Let's just talk about the mascots quick before I get a heart attack. Now, I made my full thoughts on Dot Dandel and why I dislike them and that they ruin and Dot and Dash and all that. At Yes. But, well, here's what I gotta say now. Oh, and... As of now, while I do still hate them, my opinion isn't as strong as it was in the past years. After a bit of realization, I can now confirm that the 2013 universe is not canon to the 1999 universe, and it has its own story. How? Well... As said in this video... Dot is not this dot... Hold, hold on a moment. Is, indeed, this dot is not this dot who is supposed to be a sweet and charming four-year-old, not a crazy, tough 11-year-old who makes creepy faces on purpose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was... Anyway, um... And what I mean by that nowadays is that, well, the 1999 Dot and 2013 Dot can't be classified as the same character due to having different siblings, different parents, and the whole setting looking different. They're also not the same age. 1999 Dot is, is confirmed to be 4, while 2013 Dot is confirmed to be 11. Now, don't get me wrong. Of course kids do age up, and their look does change occasionally, but it's also common for more than one kid to have the same name, too. So that's the case I'm taking for these two Dots, there's no ex explanation on D and Dell's introduction and Dash's absence, as he's not mentioned, nor does he appear. Oh, wait, he does appear in this. Where, oh, where in the holy grandmother of heaven, hell, mother nature, potatoes, cabbages, and electric alarm clocks have you been this whole time? Oh, and guess what? He doesn't appear here anywhere else and isn't mentioned as of today. You guys had the chance to explain all this and you blew it. Now, I know you feel like I might be thinking too harshly about this, but I was inspired by this guy and I can relate to him. So I just wanted to be funny. But there are more problems with these mascots. They try to look way too hip and cool, but come off as cringe. To make matters worse, they're even featured in nursery rhyme videos. All I can say is that these are just PBS Kids equivalent of Coca Melon, which isn't even educational. Oh yes, and as if that wasn't bad enough, what could the worst 
things ever happen to Dot Diendel? Well, I'll show you now. The worst thing that that they could have possibly done is this. No, 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 no. Oh, you can't teach a five-year-old how to twerk. Just look at that. That they're literally twerking. I. That's literally what twerking is like. I don't know why they allowed that to happen. You know, twerking is inappropriate for kids, right? Kids should uh, really deserve better than that. Oh, and did I mention that PBS Kids is using AI technology in their most recent program? That steals information and art. Not even Disney or Nickelodeon would stoop this low. AI technology is not really a preschool topic, and it should only be used in fan-made projects. And like I said before... Kids deserve much better quality than and this because they are smarter than you think they are. PBS Kids should know oh, this because uh, because they're meant for they're meant to be educational. Oh. And, you know, so if you ever try to tell me that it's made for kids, you need to shut the fuck up. Well, that about does it. So what are your thoughts? Do you agree with me or do you have your own personal preference? Well, well, I'm not trying to be rude or anything. I just don't like it whenever or someone tries to who uh, um tries to who um convince me that that what anything that I don't like and that it's actually good when I don't think so Oh, because I, I have my own, own uh, good reasons as to why. Hey, well, hell, you can tell me your thoughts after you've watched this, and make sure to be, to say kind things, and make sure to respect my opinion, and I'll respect yours. Well. Well, this is uh, Blue Comet Production signing off, and without further ado... Thanks for playing.